Well, hello everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. Woohoo! I'm so excited you're here. <laughs> Come on in. This is going to be an amazing webinar. We're going to talk about how to make business travel less stressful for you and ultimately less stressful for your traveler as well. I'm very excited today about our sponsor on Point Worldwide and my guest, Rachel Lockhart. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, say hi. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you more about On Point and Rachel in a moment. We want to give you a chance to come in and join us. We've got like, Florida, rainy Florida. Yes, it's always raining in Florida this time of year. Jamaica, sunny Jamaica. Okay. <laughs> We're very sunny here in Las Vegas, and Rachel's in California, correct? <laughs> so I know it's sunny there. But welcome to everyone. I'm Joan Burge, as probably many of you know, but in case you don't, I'm the founder and CEO of Office Dynamics International, and we are a leader in the development and presentation of sophisticated training programs and information for administrative professionals. And we have been doing this for 33 years. Rachel, I think our companies are very close in years. Yours is 35. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, that's great. So let's go through a few logistics. And uh, again, as everyone's coming in, the educational part of our webinar is about 40 to 45 minutes. I imagine we're going to get a lot of questions today. So you can post your questions anytime throughout the webinar. Malia will be assembling those. And then when we go to Q&A, they'll be ready. And we're going to try to answer as many questions as we can today. You, let's see what else. You will receive a replay, which is great because Rachel is going to share a lot of information with you today. Oh my gosh. She has provided me with so much information. We've had me amazing conversations. And I, I'm excited about this topic because I am a traveler. I am a work, you know, traveler. And um, I, I just know how important it is to me, you know, to get this part of the traveling right. Um, so for my, per, my personal experience, when I was an assistant over 20 years, I booked a lot of travel for my executives and ground transportation. Now, the good news was when I was an assistant, we didn't have all these different options. It was town car services and taxi. We didn't have Ubers and Lyft. So, um, but, you know, now I've been a traveler of 33 years. I'm on the road a lot, especially pre-COVID. And also, I will say from my personal perspective, I use town car services. That's my personal preference over Uber and Lyft. And we're not trying to persuade you one way or the other. Rachel's going to educate you on the different ground transportations available and uh, the different aspects of all of those so that you can hopefully make better decisions you know, for your travelers. So I will also say, though, you will personally benefit from this information. So even if you're not booking a lot of travel, remember, this is for you to know as well. So let me tell you about our wonderful sponsor. I want to thank them again. On Point is an elite ground transportation company that has been serving executive clientele globally for over 35 years. Their experience is serving high demand clients. I would say I'm probably very high demand. I'm high maintenance <laughs> <laughs> as a traveler. Led to the development of a one of a kind elastic ride management system that tracks travelers in real time and adjusts with ease if there are changes or delays so that their passengers never have to wait. And I think that's awesome. So, uh, Rachel, let's start off and just have you tell everyone what you do at OnPipe, what your role is, and then we can get into the meaty part of the topic. Great. Well, I'm lucky because I get to work predominantly with EAs. So technically, the name of my position is the Client Relations Manager. So I check in with all of our accounts and predominantly the people that 
I'm working with are executive assistants, which is great because they're capable, awesome women, sometimes slightly underappreciated that I like serving and making their life easier. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So that's really a um, very important role um, in helping executive and administrative professionals all over. So uh, we, I imagine I'm looking at, at everyone who's coming in and we've got Barbados, we have England, we have Spain. Oh, wow. wow. And again, your company is global. You can assist yes. globally. So that's great because we do have people from outside the United States. Yeah. So let's start with, and you may want to get, you know, get ready to take some notes, everyone. Again, you'll get the replay. But let's just start with the basics, even though we probably mostly know these, but I'm not assuming anything. Yeah. So what are the ride services? You call them ride services, right? That are yeah. available to us. Yeah. So let's imagine you're an EA. Um, maybe you're booking a trip for the first time for your boss. You need to do their ground transportation. So what are your options for, for ground transportation, getting them from the flight to the air to the um, hotel and like around town? So you basically have taxis, you have ride share services, and then you have car services like ours. Yes. Great. Yeah. So those and are so um, those are those are pretty simple, right? But yeah. they're complex. We have these categories. So how do I know, or how do these assistants know? Let's put it that way. It's their perspective. Which ground transportation is going to be best for their traveler? Um, and I'm also curious too, with some of you that are on. I'm just curious, uh, does your traveler have specific services they prefer? And I just thought of this question because I would be curious. Like, I know I absolutely prefer town car. I am not going to use an Uber or Lyft. Um, so I'm curious, do any of you have travelers who definitely say, I want Uber, I want Lyft, or that's what I'm going to do? You don't have to tell us which one, but I'm just curious. And if they do have a preference, dropping it in there would be also helpful for Rachel and I to see. Yeah. Due to cost savings, Uber, Lyft. Okay. So again, back to that question, how do they know what's going to be? So we got Lyft always, car service. All right. Yeah. You uh, talk to that. Yeah, great. Um so th yeah, this is such a good question. Um, how you know which one is right for you, you, you have to look at the area that you're going to, first of all. So this can be complicated. And especially if you're going to more remote areas if, or you're going out of the country, I just want to offer first and foremost that uh, you're going to get my information at, at the end of this webinar and you can call me or email me and I can help you figure this out if it's in a more complicated place. But first and foremost, what you have to look at is where your traveler is going. Um, a lot of you are going to be sending your travelers to bigger cities, and, and this is not going to be an issue because in big cities, often every form of transportation is available. There's taxi, rideshare, and car service. But there's some areas where, the, where maybe none of these are going to be available in the city. You know, So you have to, first and foremost, if you're going to book service, look and do some research into where you're going because there might only be taxis. You might not even have the option of Uber or Lyft. And I had this happen with an EA recently who sent their employer to Half Moon Bay and they were not able, they were going to just have uh, him Uber home or to the airport. And they realized as well as like a bunch of other attendees at this conference that like Uber was not available. They, they were just like, so they ended up having to call a taxi and luckily the flight was like an hour late and they ended up being able to get him there. Okay. But you have to look into that first and foremost, look and see what, what's available to you. So once, once you know what is available to, to you, let's say you, you go to a big city where you have all three options, then you have to look at what the priorities of your employer are, right? Because everyone has different priorities. Um, some, of you are going to work for people who are just going to be like price point, price point, price point. That's all we care. Get me the cheapest option. I don't like 
I don't care beyond that. Um, some of you are going to be working for employers who demand perfection, who don't really care about price point, but they want reliability. Some of you are going to be working for people who want luxury. Some of you are going to be working for people who first and foremost want safety. Um, and so you have to look at what the priorities of your boss are, and then you can pick an option from there. Mm -hmm. So um, I did see one quick question we can answer now because it kind of ties in. How do they know if Uber is available or not in a certain city? Yeah, you can Google it. Um, yeah, you can Google it. So You'll we'll post... it whatever city you're going to. And yeah, Google just it. Google it ahead of time. See what the available. And sometimes it'll be like, oh, it's available, like it's allowed, but it's just really hard to get them because it's such a remote place that Uber and Lyft drivers won't accept rides that'll take them two hours out of their city to, oh. you know, they won't, they just won't accept rides that far out. So that's kind of what you have to look at. Um, right. That's an interesting point you just brought up because, well, here's something I know, um, living in Las Vegas and being in Las Vegas we do have a lot of taxi service here for you know a lot of people who just get off the plane and we've got them they're all lined up um and what's interesting with our like so you've got the the hub of vegas you know most people know where the strip and all of that but we have the more the outskirts that are away like up by where i live you know it's 25 minutes 20 minutes from the strip depending but there is a lot out there in the west part of the valley or other parts and so um, what we've noticed, because sometimes we'll do training out this way toward the West, and then people want to grab a taxi or get a taxi. Um, the taxis don't like it if they're not going right around the strip, right? Because they could do a lot of rides in, in a short time and have that shorter logistics. Some of them, if they hear they've got to go out to other parts of town, they're like, no, nah, I don't really want to take it. So I, I think the hard part here, and sorry, I'm just thinking of these, and Rachel um, and our viewers, we're, spon we're spontaneous. Rachel has points, but I, I know I'm thinking of things as we're going through this, is again, when you're not the traveler, so let, let's go back a minute. When I was an EA and I was booking and doing all the travel logistics and all of it, you really only understand so much until you have traveled for business, not pleasure, for business numerous times, you really can't understand all the little intricacies and all the little things that can happen and go wrong. And I can tell you personally, it is so frustrating as that traveler, um, because when you're on business, it's different. You've got a lot of stress, you've got to show up, you've got to be there, you have times, and then you've got all this other stuff. And I'll also say today, the traveling is more stressful than ever. So for your executives or your travelers, I really would like you to take this like seriously because I see a lot of you are just saying, oh, we use Uber, we Lyft, we use whatever's cheaper. It's not always the best for your traveler who is, is stressed so much when they're traveling. And, and that's why On Point is here and Rachel's here to make life a little easier for everybody. So let's dig in. Um, I know you wanted to get into some specifics. Is yeah. that correct? Where we're yeah. comparing the three or not the comparing what each offers and what they go through yeah. as far as regulation and so right. forth. Yeah. And I wouldn't, again, this is not to dissuade any, like, a lot of people use Uber or Lyft or Rideshare or whatever. And like, if that works for you and your travel, that's good. Like, don't worry about that. Like, I'm not, I wouldn't try to dissuade anyone from using those um, or taxis or whatever. Um, but I think you want to be armed with as much information about the services as possible because you don't want to be re always relying on Uber or Lyft and then not have it be available. And Sometimes, you know, transportation goes wrong, things get messed up on a trip and people lose their jobs. So it's just really important that you really understand this industry because, uh, you know, you are responsible. A lot of times you can be held accountable for things going wrong.
Um, so, so a little, let's do a little, uh, so as you're weighing, okay, so what are my boss's priorities? I want you to understand sort of, I want you to understand these three options and sort of how they run, how they're regulated, and so that you can assess things like safety, reliability, and all of that. Um, so first of all, regulation, right? So executive car service, like, sorry, car services like mine, like limo, limo services or black car services, as well as taxis, have been around for so long. And because of that, they are regulated, like heavily regulated by the government for the safety of the people who use them, right? So there's a whole government agency that oversees that called the CPUC. Um, they regulate both taxi services and town car services. Um, so that includes things like overseeing background checks, car safety, uh, all you know what you would expect from a government agency trying to regulate the safety of an industry, right? Rideshare services, on the other hand, are not regulated by a government agency, and this is also why they are less expensive because it's expensive to get licensing, it's expensive to comply with all of the demands that the government asks for the safety of the travelers. So uh, the good thing about rideshare is it's less expensive. The bad thing is that it's less regulated. So uh, it's not technically as safe. So this comes into play. So the way things are regulated is one through background check. So um, executive car services like ours, all the drivers have to have seven year background checks, both federal and local every 12 months, and then random checks throughout the year can happen. Um, uh, background checks happen as well for taxi drivers. It's not as regulated as uh, black car services, um, but the DMV does this thing called DMV pool, which pulls the driving record of the drivers consistently. It can happen up to three, like as much as three times within a 90 day period. So a lot, right? So if your driver, you know, gets a DUI, you're like the service is going to be notified right away. Right. Uh, driver. Ba so background checks for Uber and Lyft. Ha there's like one that happens initially when they sign up. And that's it. And that's good. But the other problem is that there's no way of verifying that who uh, is driving you is the one that was background checked, right? Because anyone can have the app on their phone and then just get behind the wheel of a car, right? And that's an issue that happens where I don't know if you've had that where you have someone pick you up and they're not, you know, maybe the car's correct, but they don't look like the picture. And sometimes, you know, you're just trying to get in that's so fast you don't even check. And, you know, yeah, some people that don't pass background checks, but they still want to be able to drive. You can just give them your phone and then they're driving. And yeah, so in that way, it's really uh, that it's risky, right? They do have a little picture on Uber and Lyft, so you can try and match the picture, but it's small and blurry. And if they look kind of like it, then it's just... Yeah, something you want to keep in mind, especially, you know, you care about your employer and for yourself, you know, just understand that you're taking that risk. Um, and so even if they do match the uh, picture initially, it's like there isn't this continual back background check and continual checking to make sure that this driver isn't driving drunk, isn't hasn't, you know, doesn't have some hasn't done something to that would disqualify them otherwise for being able to drive. The other thing is drug testing. So uh, with with taxis and with Uber and Lyft, you get one pre-employment drug test. And with like car services like ours, you get like regular five panel drug and alcohol screening tests, um, as well as random screenings throughout the year. So it's just, again, much more regulated, much more, you know, making sure that this person is being, uh, is safe, you know, and not driving. Sure, right. Well, yeah. It. And that's the, um, that's true. Sorry, I'm just looking like what's posting here. Uber's background checks aren't as thorough. Yeah. Um, I mean, and you dig deep. So everyone, you don't have this chart, but this is very detailed. Uh, what Rachel put together, and she's going to touch on these. You also talked about driver experience. Yes. Yeah. Let's so, uh, yeah, typical, um, 
driver experience for town car service or, or executive car services uh, is like 8.5 years is like the median. So you have people that have been doing it for 30 years. People have been doing it, you know, a little less than that, but the median is eight year, eight and a half years, which is great because for a lot of these people, it's their full-time job. They're not, it's not their side hustle, you know, so they invest and it's their thing. Um, and so you get really good experienced drivers with taxi drivers, one to three years is the average experience. And then with Uber and Lyft, you can pretty much just get your license and then get sign up. You know, you don't have to have really any experience. And also um, rideshare statistics show that, you know, like only 3% of people who sign up to do rideshare services stay after a year. So there's a really high turnover of your drivers. So you're just, you're less experienced, uh, you know, not again. So if, if we're going with like safety, safe choices, these are the risks that you're taking with rideshare versus like a more established service which you're going to pay a little bit more for, but it's uh, in, in terms of like mitigating risk, it's just something that you want to think about. Yeah. And training um, as well. So like, uh, you know, typical uh, car services, they're getting 40 hours of on the road training, 20 hours of classroom training. I think Uber and Lyft, you get like an hour maybe, and it's not on the road. It's like sexual harassment training, a lot of that. Um, it's not like driving training. Um, Another yeah. one you mentioned that I thought really stood out for me when we were talking, I did not even think about it, was the vehicle maintenance and safety. Like that's an eye opener. So can you talk about that? Yeah. So this is so important, right? Like some people don't know. So I didn't even know this before I started working in this industry, which is that, so our cars have to be checked regularly. So we get like 45 day inspect every 45 day. And the drivers have to do daily checks of the car to make sure that everything is safe and vehicle sanitation, that kind of thing. With Uber and Lyft, there's like when you sign up, you have to go get a basic vehicle inspection, which is basically just checking your tires and lights, make sure your blinkers and stuff work. But things like seatbelts, like if you get in a car accident and the seatbelt is is pulled um, after that, it, 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 a lot of them won't tighten anymore. So they need to be replaced right after accidents. There's no one checking that, right? So you can get into an Uber or Lyft and the seatbelt won't work right uh and because and there's no one verifying that for you so that's another risk is that you get into a car that car gets into an accident and the seatbelts don't work or other important things about the, the you know the airbag doesn't inflate or whatever um it's just unregulated it's totally unregulated so um that's just something that you want to keep in mind for yourself as well as with um you know as well as for your employer. So I, again, like I, I periodically get an Uber and Lyfts. My, like my employers, a lot of the people I work with, like they, they won't do it and they won't let their kids do it. <laughs> it's like, because of all of these things, um, which I didn't, you know, fully realize either. Um, and I think generally you're probably okay. Right. But, but it's like, yeah, yeah. you have to think about that risk. It is. Yeah. And it, I mean, I know it's funny because like I have teenage grandchildren and they Uber here and there. And it's like, Oh, I wish they weren't doing that. And it's like, all right, I just, you know, I can't, I know not that they're going to take a town car all over. <laughs> they're, yeah. they're still getting their licenses. Some of them, you know, yeah. So, um, can we oh, oh just for taxis too. Sorry. Someone, I can see people in the chat are asking about taxis. So they also don't have the same regular re required maintenance maintenance. They are cleaned once daily. Um, but yeah, it's also like, it, it's not as he heavy. The maintenance is not as heavily regulated. It's more like uh, it depends on the service a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, Cause you have like single operator taxis and then you have uh, larger operations. It's like a, sort of a, as a more or less complicated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, um, 
the I'm also looking on our chart. What else you talked about? Well, there's the different types of vehicles. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, our like uh, town car services like ours are are typically going to be more luxury. They're just going to be, uh, you know, we do <laughs> the types of cars are like Mercedes, BMW, Cadillac, Audi. They're between one and, you know, the oldest is like up to three years old. So uh, late model sedans and SUVs uh, with obviously with Uber and Lyft, I think the car can be up to 15 years old. You guys have probably gotten in some janky Uber or Lyfts. <laughs> um, and they're- I was <laughs> telling the story. I was, I was just, yeah. I was just telling Rachel before we went live that we had an experience. I was not at all a happy camper. So um, in March, it was March 3rd, I uh, traveled with my team to um, San Jose. I was receiving a Lifetime Achievement Award, which I was very happy about. Um, and it was a big gala event, gowns, you know, and or dressy dresses, and the guys were all dressed up. And so I took my team with me, and we have two men with us. And then there were um, Malia, Gina, myself, and then another lady had come as well. And so because there were so many of us, we, we really all couldn't fit in one car in the we stayed at one hotel, but the gala was at another hotel that was like 10 minutes away. So all of them, of course, are saying, oh, we'll just grab an Uber Lyft. It's no big deal. And I'm like, so I'm like, fine, whatever, you know, because it's only 10 minutes away. And because we're all together, I'll do that. But if I'm alone, I won't do that. So going over, it was fine. But then later at night when we had to come back and it was later, um, we're all waiting and waiting and there we are again. I had this gorgeous gown on and we're all decked out, the women and all of it. And this car pulls up, this vehicle to fit all of us in it. And it was disgusting. I mean, I was shocked and so was everyone else. The outside was all beat up, had dents in it. The guy gets out and everybody's like, uh, all right, I guess let's get in. Well, I think because it was late, I mean, personally, I would have said, no, I'm not going anywhere in this vehicle. He opened the vehicle and it was filthy and beat up and it looked like he had kids because it looked like some of the little kid stuff was left. It smelled. I was like, I looked at everybody, this is why I don't do this stuff. You know, this is why. I mean, chances are it doesn't happen often, but I don't even need it once. Um, so for me, it's, I just don't, I just don't trust that I have no clue what I'm going to get and if they're even going to show up. So again, I'm not, I'm not pushing town cars. I am going to get to something though, that again, uh, for uh, your executives and your leaders and some of your travelers, you know, sometimes it is worth the extra money to feel safe and secure and, and all of that so i know so many of you are saying you know we're budget we can't our travelers can't do anything else well i guess my answer to that is hey i'll pay the extra money out of my own pocket i don't care it's 50 more dollars big deal 40 more dollars each way maybe even only 30 dollars or 20. but there's so many benefits and again i i know i'm kind of taking over right now but um the reason is because I am the traveler and I am an executive. Um, and so, but again, personally, I do it as well sometimes. Um, and I wanna just comment really quick because I saw one of you wrote a note earlier that the traveler, you need feedback from your traveler. If they don't say anything to you, then you assume everything is fine, you know, with whatever they're using, but you don't wait for them. Like every time I come back from a trip, Malia and I sit and go through that trip. And I tell her if I, because I have even gotten a few town car services, very, very few, maybe one or two, where um, I didn't like that particular driver, but this, these were in other cities and we were just kind of trying to search, which I think also is very good for you to talk about, Rachel that when you are searching in other cities, even if you're going to use a town car service, what, and you're going to get to that, what do you need to look for, right? 
Yeah. Um, but um, what was I saying? We debrief after every trip. I let her know about the hotel. Did I like it? Didn't I like it? What restaurants? What I liked? What I didn't like? We go through all of that. So don't wait for your travelers to comment because sometimes they won't even comment. They'll, they come back, they go into meetings, they're on to their next thing. But we always do a debrief after every trip and what worked and what didn't work. So yeah. we can get better, right? Yeah. Um, and I think it's like, people. yeah, I think it's like also thinking about, okay, maybe Uber and Lyft are going to be good for these like short little things that, you know, places that they need to go. But if your traveler is going to be on like a 16 hour flight and then they're going to be in Dubai and it's a new airport and, you know, they're, they're going to be sleep deprived and then they have to be at a meeting five hours after that. It's like, you want to think about, okay, what can I do to make, you know, maybe for this leg of the trip, we get someone who's going to meet them at the airport so that, you know, they don't have to wander around in a new city. And maybe we, you know, we want to have a town car that's going to have water and tissues and hand sanitizer after a long flight, like those types of amenities that are going to be available to them, uh, which you can ask for with like a black car service, you know, and a lot of times they're just available. Most of yeah, most black car services will have. Yeah. A lot of times they have that water. I know when I, after I've traveled and I get in the car and I see that bottle of water, I'm like, oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I just want to say too, like, so, you know, obviously we're going to be, fo we're focusing on ground transportation, um, but ground transportation, you know, and ground tra transportation is one part of the travel experience, right? You have the flights, you have the hotels, you have the ground transportation connecting everything. But ground transportation is really important because ground transportation can be a buffer between your traveler and delays and the stresses of traveling, right? Like we don't have a lot of control over what flight, what happens with flights, right? Like flights can be early or late and you as an EA can't really do much about that. Um, but your car service, if they're on top of it and they have flight tracking, they can get, they can track the flight and make sure that they get there right when your person gets off the plane. So that even if the flight is really delayed or even if it comes in early, they're able to not have to wait at the airport in Singapore for two hours because, you know, everything got messed up because of the flight and your car, you know, the ta you can't get a taxi because it's one, whatever. So um, I think that if you can get, figure out your ground transportation piece, you can solve a lot of what, it, what stresses out travelers during trips, which is like all of the and travelers and EAs. So just wanted to put yeah, that that's in. a good point. Yeah. Um, and then you had, let's see, we had the, I'm looking at your checklist because I want to make sure you get into all the, the other pieces you wanted to speak about. Yeah. Um, you were saying, uh, I don't know if we addressed it yet, um about in knowing what to choose you had something about how comfortable they uh, the, the ea is oh yes yeah, yeah. The travel so can you speak to that yeah 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 so so you so first thing you want to look at is like obviously your employer you need to meet the needs of your employer and think about that but you should also think about yourself like what you can handle as an ea right so if you are <laughs> You know, if you're booking a trip to Vietnam for your boss and, uh, you know, your boss is going to be landing at 2 a.m. and you're, you know, going to be in charge of making sure that they get from the airport to the hotel, 2 a.m. your time, right? So are you OK with being up all night or being up at 2 a.m. or having your phone on in case something goes wrong? Like, are you in a place in your life where you can do that? Or do you want to hire a car service or some type of transportation that will track that for you, right? Because that's maybe you don't, I mean, some of you might not know this, but, but some black car services, they have live dispatching. So, so basically they will monitor the trip for you. So you don't have to be on your phone making sure they got there or have your phone on or be up in case there's uh, an issue. So that's one thing where it's like, if that's not going to be an issue for you, you want a cheaper option. You're just going to sort of keep your phone handy overnight while your boss is landing in another country. That's okay. But if you're like a mom or whatever, have health issues and can't be up all night, 
every time your boss travels out of the country, it's good to know, like, it's good to know that about yourself, right? Um, uh, let's address, I see something that came in, um, and this I think is typical, but I'm not sure. With the town car service, Denise is saying they booked a town car service in the past and they told them their wait time is one hour. And after that hour, they leave and that's not convenient for a traveler. I know I've been delayed like a couple hours on flights and so forth. And again, that that particular service was tracking me. I mean, we were stuck in Florida four hours on the ground, on the plane. And, you know, the, I use a great service here in town um, before I knew about you folks. And so um, they were tracking the whole time and they, they just knew it and they, you know, they adjusted accordingly. So that car wasn't sitting there and waiting for me. They do other runs, but, but are there some companies that is that true rate show? Like, I mean, yeah. so then yeah. is that where you've got to dig into the particular town car service? Yeah. So, so that, that's something that we're going to talk about later on, which is like, how do I vet if I decide, okay, I want to go with car services. How do I vet car services? Cause there's a lot. So I'm mm -hmm. going to help you guys do that. You definitely want to check that because basically that's telling me if they're saying, you know, we have an hour window, we leave after that. They're not tracking your flight. Right. Cause again, flights, are early and late that that they're not dependable right so you need to have a car service that is tracking them like uh otherwise what's the point right it's like you book them you have someone there but yeah i mean everyone has wait times and if the flight is delayed and so basically what they should be doing is tracking the flight they have their dispatching team this is what we do um, we have our, our dispatching team tracking the flight. We don't send the driver until we know the flight's going to be there, right? So mm -hmm. that that's kind of what you want to look for. And that's what you you can vet ahead of time. Yeah. Oh, and in fact, speaking of that, because I just was on, I've been on a few trips recently. Um, and so what I, what I, again, what's great with a service I've used here is that I get the, or even in another city, I was in Indianapolis a few weeks ago. So with these services, I will get a text on my phone and I'll see that they dispatched my pickup. And it's usually like 20 minutes before or 15 minutes before I arrive. So then I'll see, okay, it's been dispatched. Like you said, it's not way out. They've been tracking and so they know if I'm late and then they yeah. they'll dispatch, which is great. Yeah. And that's another really important thing, actually, Joan, is connecting the drivers with uh, with the travelers. Yeah. Um, we call it marrying them. So oh, the, okay. our dispatchers marry them um, because, yeah, you need to the traveler needs to be able to, especially like if they're in an unfamiliar airport or whatever, some car services or drivers, they don't like they won't do that. They just like don't want to give driver information. So you need to make sure that they'll do that because you want your traveler to be able to connect directly with the driver in case they need mm -hmm. something or they're lost or whatever. Yeah, I love that personally because I will call my drivers. I um, mean, sometimes I'll just say, hey, I'm still sitting on the airplane. Even though we got in early, I'm still sitting on the plane and I'll be 10 or 15 minutes. So it's also for me a courtesy to my driver. Yeah. And, and that they know I'm I'm aware and I know they're there. I'm just not getting off yet. So, and that, like I said, that connection for the traveler with their transportation person, it's really helps reduce the stress on a trip. So you've got to get into, I'm watching our time. Um, if any of our people want to check out car services, yeah, what do they need to keep in mind. How do you do that? Yeah, we can go through this really real quick, and then so we we're can get. Good. We're okay. I think we're. Good. Yeah, to I'm the wedding. Our time, but go ahead. Yeah. So the first thing you want is excellent communication. So with with black car services, there's a wide variety, right? Sometimes you have like a one man show where it's like he just has his car and he's the only he's the owner operator, and that's where you kind of get like. They don't have as many capabilities. It's a small service. Um, 
so that's very different than like a company like ours where we're large we have a dispatch team we have a lot of cars we have you know it's it's like they're, they're not going to have as many capabilities sure. that's not always a problem it's you know not not a problem to go with like a smaller uh, operation it's just some of the, the things that you're going to need as an ea are i recommend that you make sure that there's excellent communication so Sometimes if it's a single owner operator, you know, they're not going to be have 24 hour dispatching. They're not going to have 24 hour like, mm. you know, someone to call that guy's got to sleep. Right. So um, so you 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 want a service where it's like you can call 24 hours in case there's an issue. Like if you have to cancel or whatever, then you're going to get a hold of someone. Um so you want excellent communication. You can judge that by like, if you send an inquiry, does someone pick up the phone? Does someone email you back quickly? Like that's, kind of, you want like pretty quick uh, responses. And you want to see that like right from the beginning when you're looking for people. Operational capabilities, again, executive assistants, you want to have them do be doing extensive flight tracking. Anyone can, can track commercial flights pretty much. Like you can kind of just Google it. But uh, a lot of you are going to have bosses that fly private and that's kind of harder. Again, that's one of the things that we've had to learn how to do and make sure that we can do is track the private as well as the commercial flights um, because flights get in early or late. Again, I, I guess for, for, we have a really high demand clientele, so we, they can't wait. Right. So, so we've had to learn to, tra you know, to track the flights I think you're going to want that as well. So make sure that you ask about that. Another thing is, um, trans Rachel, yeah. I'm going to stop you real quick because I think this is important. There, uh, we have a question: Is a black car service the same as town car service? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Many names. Yeah. On service. We're yeah. talking about like it's. You can call it limo service. Uh, black car service, executive ground transportation. There's a few, you know, a few names for them. Okay. Yeah. Right. Sorry. I thought we better touch on that right away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you had the communications you had, Oh, go ahead. I know you were going to talk about some of the other. Yeah. So op operational things uh, you want to have transparent pricing. So you want to make sure that you're getting transparent pricing, right? So, and I'm going to help you figure that out. But the main thing is that when you ask for pricing, uh, ask for the all-inclusive rate, which will include all the taxes and fees and gratuity rather than just like, because sometimes you will just get like uh, a fair rate, which is just like the base rate. But every one of these services, you know, there's more fees generally attached just because the service has fees. Like we have all these costs that we have to deal with. So you want to ask for the all inclusive rate. So you understand fully like what the charge is going to be. And some people can be a little um, dishonest with this. So that's why you want to make sure that, you know, Oh, they'll quote you like, $60 for the transfer, but then in the fine print in the email, it'll be like crazy, all these crazy fees, right? So that's why mm -hmm. you want to see that you're getting transparent pricing. Um, yeah, that's important. And I know, you know, that's something Malia, you know, really has to do too. Like you said, is the gratuity included or, oh no, it's not. And now I got a tip on top of that. Yeah. So yeah. Um, that was great. Yeah. Um, and so the, um, I saw, a I wanted to comment because somebody mentioned about hotel shuttle services. So those are, those are good too, to look at. Um, I mean, in terms of, I know there are the hotels, though they're 10 minutes from the airport, they'll offer a shuttle service. Uh, I would really ask your traveler how they really like that. I mean, for me personally, I don't always rely on that just because if I'm departing the hotel, a lot of times you can't schedule that hotel shuttle service ahead of time. You have to wait and see if it's available that morning. Well, I can't wait. If I have to depart for a flight, I can't wait and see if it's available to take me. So those of you, if your traveler comments about, well, just see if there's a hotel shuttle service. There is one. 
but do they are they going to pick up five travelers at the airport and you have to wait for each person to arrive so again if you don't do this on a regular basis yourself these are those little details you don't know so i just wanted to add that in there because some of them are referring to hotel shuttle services yeah i think it's important to mention that right and uh, again like that can be a great option you just have to do the research ahead of time to make sure that that is going to work for your boss mm -hmm. um but yeah that can be a good option um so the last two things i think that you want to look for as an ea from your uh, car service if you decide to go for that is ease of booking so you want to make sure that they save your information you can get an account you don't have to like tell them your address and payment information like every time you want to book them so we haven't like an account you know you create an account and all of that is saved so you can just go in there and like a lot of our travelers our executives you know they'll do the same route over and over again right they have to go from the car to the airport to this you know city for a meeting and and so it's very easy for the eas to be able to do that so you want to ask at least about that because it'll save you time as an executive assistant and yeah, then um, so yeah. oh go ahead i know we have to go let's see to questions yeah um, and i also just want to make a really quick comment to just to reiterate because you mentioned this in the beginning but i don't think everyone was in yet that you have said P the eas can just call you to talk through stuff it doesn't mean yeah. you have to use your service right yeah yeah i think mm -hmm. that's important um for us to mention yeah yeah for sure like i Again, like I, I have a really soft spot in my heart for executive assistants. It's mainly who I work with. So, yeah, if you have travel issues or questions, like please just call me and I can help you troubleshoot whether you go with our service or not. That's totally fine. Um, I saw a, a question here about group transport, and this was actually the last thing I was going to yes. uh, talk on in this section, which is, yeah, a lot of you are going to have to arrange transport for board meetings or like group events, whatever. And so that's a nice thing to know if your this these travel uh, these car services that you're vetting can do that. So we definitely do that. We board we handle board meetings all year long. Um, and also sometimes our clients are just like, we're putting on a private concert, and we want a hundred cars in this place in Connecticut. And that's also something that we do. So if you have like events. This is a plug for us. I don't know that all car services do this, but I, I, I assume that there are other ones that can do this as well. But but that's definitely something that we've had to learn to be able to figure out because our executive assistants will need it. They'll, they, they'll need 15 cars for an event. Um, and so we have sort of an elastic service where we can do that. Um, so yes, group transportation is important. Whoever uh, wrote that as a question and we can definitely handle it and you should if that's something that you need, it's definitely a question you should ask and vet whatever car service you're looking into. That's a good point. Cause right, while we're saying town, we've used the word town cars or whatever. But again, I know just again, from my own personal experience, a lot of them have sprinter vans and all these other kinds. If you have groups of different sizes that they can accommodate, not every one of them, but there are that's another question right that would be asked so let's go to their questions yeah. uh, malia when you're ready and um if any of you have to head out go ahead but hopefully yes we're going to get through some of your questions okay all righty um so let me see i'm so sorry um karen wants to know when scheduling like a taxi service if you know this um how would you know if they're safe? How do you research if they're safe or not? That is tricky um, because a taxi services, it's such a wide, it's almost like you'd need to go there. You can definitely ask them like, hey, how do you, how often do you inspect your cars? Do your drivers do background checks? So if you can verbally vet, that's what I would recommend and ask some like nice pointed questions and hopefully they have really good quick answers for you. Mm. I think, you know, I like to rely on people being or trust, you know, I guess you can't just trust, but you definitely, I think most people don't want to injure 
the passengers that they're carrying, right? So, but again, you should ask some pointed questions, I think, you know, has this car been in an accident? Like, yeah, just how often are, are you inspecting your vehicles? Has the driver's been background checked? When was that the last time that happened? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Um, let's see. Also, how often, if at all, are vehicles changed out for town car services and taxis? So for town car services, the, the oldest you will find generally is like three years. That's like the oldest will go. And that's what a generally in the industry, because it's a lug, it's a more luxury service. So people do not use old cars. Um, generally ours aren't even three years old, but they'll, the oldest would be like two and then they'll switch it out. Uh, taxis can be like You've seen taxis, like taxis can be like 30 years old. I mean, even older than Uber and Lyft, like that 15 year, you've seen, I mean, I'm sure you've been in New York and you've seen those like- I've been in a few. <laughs> <laughs> taxis can be very old. <laughs> yeah. All right, go um, ahead. We'll be okay, uh, let's see. Does the credit card need to be in the person who's renting, who's driving in the vehicle? Um, they use a department card and um, also, can you book on behalf of others um, or arrange services for like a large group where there might be multiple cars? Yes, all of that, yes. They don't need the driver. The um, What generally happens is you will, as the EA, EA will book the service and you'll, you'll ha they'll have a credit card on file. So they'll take your credit card information and then charge you after the trip. And we have a, so this is the other thing is a cancellation policy. Uh, that's another thing you need to check because some people will try and get you on the cancellation policy. The industry standard is two hours. So they should have around a two hour cancellation policy for car service. If it's more than that, that's not normal. So because your, your meetings for your executive are going to get canceled and moved around and you need to have some flexibility there. Um, so anyway, your, your traveler does not need to have the card on them. You, that information will generally be gotten ahead of time by you. And yes, you you should be able to book group transportation ahead of time easily. Okay. Um, really quick, uh, just in case people go off, somebody is asking me if we could provide on points website and contact info. Can we do that real quick? Yeah. Because and again, you can contact them through me as well. I can I I can like forward requests. I'm not sure how they contact you. Yeah, I did, I did put her information in there. I will do it again right yeah, now. Yeah, do it again. I did see it earlier, Malia, but we're getting asked again. Yeah, and I can, um, you know, definitely like, if, if you go through me, I can then forward you more information, link the website, you know, answer more specific questions, give you more catered service. Yeah. But you can definitely also go on our website, which is on pointworldwide.com. <laughs> okay. Um, Bobby wants to know if you have any advice in, um, in rental car places. So, um, if the executive lands and the executive needs the car to drive around, um, instead of using a town car or Uber, but the flight's delayed or something happens and the rental car place closes, what would your advice be for that? Yeah. Rent, rental car, that's a whole nother beast. Um, it's tricky. Yeah, that's that's one of the risks with it is that, yeah, it closes. I, I would say if you're going to go with a rental car service, definitely check the hours ahead of time and make sure that you have a backup if it closes. Because maybe it closes for that day, you're going to need to taxi them or Uber them or car service them to their hotel and then figure out how to coordinate that after the fact it's kind of, there's really not much you can do if the flight gets delayed and the car gets, you know, they, they miss think, the, that. Yeah, I think that's where your EA would have to be monitoring your trip, right? And that's where the issue is if it, you're traveling and it's later at night and your EA isn't, you know, for some EAs, that's part of their job requirement. You know, they're 24-7 and they need to be monitoring and then they're having to call that car rental company while the executives and you know while you're in your flight um you know i was just thinking from that perspective and then it depends if you're the traveler well if you have connections and you know you're running late 
you know, what I would do is when I'm making that connection and I know I'm three hours behind, I'm going to call, I'll call myself, let's say, if I used a car rental. But they may not always have that opportunity or have the time to do it. So that's, again, where that EA is held with that responsibility when they're renting vehicles, um, which I understand why, you know, they executives might have to do that but it puts a little more burden and stress right, right on the EA and the traveler. Yeah. I want to emphasize too, that we can help people globally. I've seen a few questions like, are you in London? Are you in, and we are, uh, so we can help like any of you that are like worldwide, feel free to like reach out if you need help or have questions at the very least, I can help point you in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think it's a good question. Sorry, I'm jumping in on you, Malia. I like this one, though. Can you request customized amenities for your I was just kidding. Are you going to do that one? I just thought, and I'm like, oh, I think that's a good question. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. For our service, definitely. Um, yeah, we Snacks. love to customize. Oh, speaking of that, so here's another good point we didn't even talk about. Um, I've had services where after I've been traveling really late and I'm not, and I'm, it's really late and I'm getting hungry. I've had my town car driver say, would you like me to stop? There's a convenience store here. Do you want me to stop and you can get some food or you could get something to take to your hotel with you? I'm like blown away when they say that and they're not charging me extra. They're just, Hey, do you need me to do that? And again, that's that as a traveler who maybe even traveling 12 hours all day because of connections and delays, and now you're getting in at seven, eight, and I'm famished. And now, you know, Uber, they're not gonna go stop. <laughs> you can't stop it. And maybe I used to have a half hour drive to the hotel. <laughs> it's true. It's a grind. <laughs> <laughs> Are there other questions? Um, we have Francois wants to know minute. if can, uh, <laughs> guarantee um, non-smoking vehicles. Yes, non absolutely. Transport. I'm in Cal, like, yeah, I, I, you should be able to request anything like that. Your, the car should not smell like anything <laughs> in a luxury service, yeah. So definitely. And um, somebody else mentioned um, that Town Car Services has a reputation of being too expensive or too much of a gap in rates. Um, I just, before you answer that, um, I just want to say that, like, we've had to do reimbursement on travel for um, our speakers when they come to our conference. And um, I've seen Uber from, you know, what, a 20, 30 minute drive from the airport to the Red Rock Hotel um, in upwards of $80 for a one way travel. So town car services, it, I mean, it's, it's pretty well close to what you would get for Uber anymore, is it not? Well, it, total, it, it also depends on like surges. So Uber can be like really cheap, but then if you happen to be like at a surge time, you have like a 20 minute drive can go up to like $300. And so generally it, it, I would say it's less expensive, but you, you can't always depend on that. And also, yeah, black car service isn't always going to be crazily more expensive. However, I, it, it, it will be generally because of the licensing, because of all the extra things that you're getting that Uber is not giving. It's just, it costs more to operate a, a well-run car service because of the safety, because of the concierge type of service, because of the late model vehicles, all of those things. So. So I have a quick comment. It's funny. Somebody said, about my that they wouldn't leave their luggage in the car with the driver if they were to I was to stop and get food. I'm trusting that town car service 100%. I would not do it with an Uber or Lyft. God knows who that person is and where they're going to go off to. That's the the beauty of a town car service. You know, I'll know where to go. We'll know who to go to and how to track that person. Yeah, down. yeah. There's some legal like recourse if they were to go away with your luggage, right? Like there's, they know who the driver is. The driver's been background checked. Like, yeah. Yeah, they'll go get them. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
All right. Oh, where are we on time? I'm trying to see. Oh, we have one minute left. Okay. So I guess I want to thank you very, very, very much. I, I think this was a great discussion. Just hope we've given help and thought for all of you. Again, it's not trying to persuade you one way. We're trying to educate you. Um, right, Rachel, to help make better decisions in the future. So, Rachel, thank you again. Yeah, um, oh, if you have a closing comment you were going to say if they want to get in and try you out, you have an incentive. Yeah, so, yeah, we do. That. Yeah, if you're interested in trying our service, we will offer. We're offering one leg free. So, if you're if you use us for a transfer, let's say to the airport, uh, we will. Uh, do one of the legs complimentary. So you can get, you'll pay for one leg and then the ride home, let's say, would be comped for your first trip. Yeah. And um, also, if any executive assistant, um, you know, contacts me just for consultation or uh, books a trip, you'll be entered into a drawing to win a $500 voucher for town car service for yourself. Woo. So, yeah. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah. So travel and style yeah yeah so feel free to reach out or if you need if you would like to book service with us you'll be entered into that drawing as well thank yeah. you so much it really yeah. been very very informative even for myself so thank i appreciate it uh some really quick announcements before you head out what's up next we do have our enlightened june virtual two-day mid-year training event you can check that out uh, I won't go into any details, but that's coming up in June. Um, late June, we're starting our world-class assistant certification course. That's a live virtual. It's six weeks, two hour classes. And then of course our 30th year annual conference here in Las Vegas in October. We're super excited about that. Um, so if you wanna come to something in person this year and network with hundreds of assistants from all over the world, uh check it out so i think that's it thank you all so much for joining us today and uh, thank you rachel again so take care everyone yes. bye bye